Hey guys, I wanted to do a follow-up on last week's uh, budgeting video, kind of about my budgeting system and how it works. I wanted to update a little bit with some actual numbers that are pretty standard every month and show you the process and how it looks once it's been filled out and all of that. So that's kind of what this video is about. I also am going to talk a little bit more about the system and uh, the the hierarchy of how those percentages work, especially the investment and savings category. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. That's what's coming. If you have additional questions for me, don't hesitate to ask them and I will uh, answer them in a future video. So when I start a new budgeting page in my notebook, I just transfer over the amounts from the previous page. And again, these are not necessarily like the amounts that are in the checking account as they are right now, but this is what is in my accounts according to, um, you know, trying to get ahead on expenses or like these three accounts aren't actual bank accounts. They're just like mental accounts that I like to keep track of. So every new page starts with all of these accounts right at the top so I don't have to flip back and forth and find them again. I've also reached the part of the month where my tenant income, my rental income comes in so I can actually start budgeting for April's mortgage, homeowner, landlord, insurance, renter's insurance, car insurance, health insurance, and everything else that comes out every month. So as you can see here, my usual tenant income is $1,345.50. That does change uh, periodically if the tenants like need a maintenance visit or a plumber or a new appliance or anything like that it can go down but on average it's around the $1,300 mark my mortgage for the property is $969.82 that includes the principal the interest yada 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 uh, my homeowner's landlady insurance is $71.50 my renter's insurance is $17.33 my car insurance is $77.83 and my health insurance is $197.89. All right, so I went ahead and deducted all of those monthly fees, and I added another one for my podcast uh, syndication service. And then I went through and took out my tithe, my taxes, and my investment slash savings from that tenant income amount. You can see those amounts right there. Also, farther down the page, I have an expense from my PayPal account for a knitting pattern I bought. And then you can see some income I have from my coaching and how that gets broken down immediately as well. And these accounts will, these amounts will all be updated um, moving forward. All right, so here you can see the updated amounts in each account um, and how I break down the tithe taxes and investment slash savings. These all have a pretty significant amount in them right now. So I will be uh, paying out a tithe and transferring over these two amounts to uh, my savings for taxes and then also my investments. At this time of the year, uh, all of these will probably go towards my um, retirement accounts until I max those out. And uh, that's a basic overview of how my budgeting works. I just can continue with this process um, every time I spend money or uh, make money or transfer money between one of those primary uh, cash accounts. So as you can see, I try to plan ahead and account for as much of my known expenses as I possibly can. Some other bills that come out every month that vary in the amount, or like my phone bill is different every month, I don't account for that ahead of time necessarily, but I know around about how much it costs, so I kind of just keep that in my head as I'm going through my monthly accounting to make sure that I have enough to cover it. And to add a little clarification to my savings slash investing category, I have a hierarchy of accounts that that money goes to first and foremost. So if my if my emergency savings account is lower than I want it to be um, because I had to dip into it for some reason or another, that gets filled up first. And once that meets my $1,000 threshold that I'm super comfortable with, then the savings slash investment uh, percentage goes towards my retirement, my uh, Roth IRA, etc. until I max out that amount 
And once that amount is maxed out for the year, then I go into other investments into the stock market, etc. Last year was the very first year in all of my 31 years that I have been able to max out my retirement contributions. That was very exciting. So hopefully I'll be able to max out my retirement contributions again this year and contribute some of that funding towards the stock market. It's been a really fun thing to learn. I am absolutely not a professional in any way. It's just been something that has interested me for a while. I've read a lot about it. Um, and I think it's really important to educate yourself and also to know yourself um, before you start investing in the stock market. I'm not going to make this an investing video, but I did want to categorize I did want to clarify that my savings slash investment allocations have a hierarchy of where they go. And after, you know, step one is, is handled and dealt with and met, then step two happens. And after step two, then there's step three. And so far, there's only three steps. When I move on beyond three steps, you guys will be the first to know. So I guess this concludes uh, this week's short little uh, budget update video. If you have additional questions about how I do my finances or the whys behind it or any other like resources or books or anything like that, um, again, feel free to leave them in the comments or send me a message or something and I will do my best to answer them in a future video. I really like talking about money and I would love to talk about money more. So I think it's a conversation that we need to have more. I think it needs to not be taboo. I think the whole world will benefit if we can talk about money more, especially if women can have and talk about money more. So please tune in uh, for future budgeting videos and also check out the other videos on my channel about the Deliberate Living podcast or uh, living in a van, some of the adventures that I'm having, how I converted it way back when. Um, and yeah, have a kick-ass day and do something good for yourself today. Do something good for your money today. Mm -hmm.